right. Uh, before I begin, I want to give a quick shout out to my friend Kim Maida. We were originally going to be doing a joint talk at this conference, and she had some some issues come up. And uh, so I just want to give her a quick shout out. I hope she's doing well, and I hope my slides live up to her expectations. So we're going to be talking about the role of effects in NGRX authentication. And I love to teach NGRX. I love NGRX in general. It's one of my favorite technologies right now. And I love teaching about it. I think it's because it's complex, abstract concepts. And so I love breaking that down and making it understandable to newcomers and junior developers. But what a lot of us have found in the NGRX ecosystem is that effects are one of the hardest parts of learning NGRX. I know it was for me. Uh, and I think part of that is because while on the one hand, effects are really powerful and can do a lot of things, they're really abstract. They're not as concrete as actions or reducers. There's something about uh, actions just dispatching a payload to the reducer to update state that I think people get a lot faster than getting effects. So in addition to loving NGRX and teaching about NGRX, I also love auth which makes sense given that I work for an identity company. Uh, and over the last year, I've been giving this talk on demystifying token authentication. And consistently, I've found that it turns out that effects are really the cornerstone of the whole auth process in NGRX. So it doesn't take a rocket scientist to uh, put that together, right? The, that effects are the hardest part of learning NGRX, but they're also the biggest part of the auth process in NGRX, and that combination is enough to induce a mild panic attack. So in this talk, my goal is to turn you from mild panic attack to sigh of relief as I teach you some uh, ways to overcome some common struggles with effects in NGRX, and especially in authentication. So what we're going to do in this talk, we're going to cover some general concepts about effects and how they're the DJ of NGRX. We're going to talk about common struggles people have with effects. And then we're going to look at effects in the login flow and how you can overcome those struggles that everyone faces there. So Frosty mentioned, I'm Sam Julien. I am a developer advocate for Auth0. We're an identity and access management company for developers. I'm also a Google developer expert and Angular collaborator. I created the course UpgradingAngularJS.com, and I'm an instructor for both Thinkster and Egghead. So let's start by just talking about effects in general. And we'll do a quick architecture review to get that started. So in vanilla Angular, we typically have services and components, and they interact with each other in both directions. But in NGRX, we don't really do that, right? Instead, instead of having services and components that are interacting with each other directly, we break apart our architecture so that our app state is updated by dispatching actions to reducers, and then components read that state through selectors. Effects also listen for actions and handle side effects. Effects do a lot of things, and I think what most people think of is what that the effects decide when to call services, and they communicate with APIs. That tends to be where people start to get effects. They start to realize, oh, I need to call an API, so I must use an effect here. But effects can do one more thing, which is handle control flow logic. And this is where I think people start to get tripped up. What do I mean by handling control flow logic? That's kind of a, a jargon, jargony phrase there. Well, what that means is that effects function as a task runner. Effects are the brain of NGRX. Mike and Brandon say that effects are the meat of the NGRX lasagna. I like to say that effects are the DJ of the NGRX dance floor. They make sure everything, everyone's having a good time and the music is playing in the right order and everything's going well. But working with effects isn't always a bowl of cherries. And there are a few things that people really tend to struggle with, three in particular. The first is actions that only trigger effects. Now, what do I mean by that? This is actions that don't touch the reducer to modify state. The second is non-dispatching effects. These are effects that don't return an action. And then the third one is complex effects. 
So complex effects, this is when you run into a scenario where you're trying to handle multiple side effects at once. It turns out when you're implementing auth in NGRX, you come across all of these problems. Do we have actions that only trigger effects in auth? We sure do. How about non-dispatching effects? Yep. And what about complex effects? Yep, we've got some of those too. So let's look at effects in the login flow and we'll see how we can overcome each of these struggles. Before we get to auth in NGRX, let's just look at auth in general just to get an idea of the flow that we're working with. What we're gonna talk about here is just the, the basic login process. So you kick off the login by usually clicking a button or something, you get sent over to some sort of identity provider where you log in, and then the, that provider sends you back to the application. The application then needs to handle that redirect. Usually you've got some sort of auth SDK or something that goes out and exchanges a code for a token and brings back a success or error message. Inside of that success is where we'll usually have our user and token, and then we'll get some sort of URL. Usually we need to send our, our user to another part of the app that's protected. Now in vanilla Angular, what we typically do here is we throw everything into an auth service. So this auth service does a bunch of stuff, right? It stores the token and user in memory, it interacts with the auth SDK, and it handles all of the redirect logic for us. And then that auth service interacts directly with the components and also interacts with data services. Usually we need to add the token to an outgoing request so that we can hit like a protected API or something. But this isn't how we do it in NGRX. Instead of having an auth service with data services and components interacting together, we have this distributed architecture, right? Where our auth service becomes this thin layer around our SDK alongside of our effects. And the rest of those responsibilities get spread out between effects selectors and reducers. So now what I wanna do is look at that flow again from the standpoint of NGRX. And I have a little bit of a challenge here for you. When we go through this again, I want you to think about which parts of the auth flow directly change state. So we kick off our login process, we get sent over to the provider, we get sent back to the app to handle the redirect, and then we process the success or error, and we pull out our user and our token, and then send the user on their merry way. Now, which parts of that actually update state in the application? Well, it's actually only this part where we get the user and the token. These are the only things, I mean, you may store more than this, but these are the only, this is the only part that we're gonna actually put in our store, in our state. Everything else in this process is a side effect, which means that everything else needs effects. So let's break this into two pieces. First, let's zoom in on the, just starting the login process and getting sent over to the provider. We have a, probably an instinct to go ahead and create an action because we know somehow we've got to kick off this process. So we, we create a login action. And then you're probably thinking, okay, I know I need to call the auth service to log in, so I must need an effect for that. So that's a good instinct. So we create a login effect, and that login effect listens for the login action that we've created. And then we're going to use the tap operator. That's just the operator that's used for side effects in RxJS and we're gonna call the auth services login function. Now this login function on the auth service, let's just zoom in on this and see what it's doing. So in the auth service, this login function is just wrapping the auth client's login function. Whatever SDK you're using, you'll just sort of use this as a pass through. So then we could go back to the effect, and after we call the login, we're not going to dispatch a new action here because we're just gonna be sent off to somewhere else. So we need to pass this dispatch set to false options object. So right away, you can see here, just, just in our first step here, we've already encountered two of people's common struggles with effects. We've already come across actions that only trigger effects and non-dispatching effects. So what can we do to help us understand this a little bit better? Well, this is where it really comes in handy to remember that effects are a task runner for NGRX. They are the DJ of the NGRX dance floor. But what do I mean by that? Well, so if you tell your DJ to play your favorite song, unless the DJ just immediately starts serenading you on the spot, nothing happens right away, right? The DJ has to do things like, 
go grab a record, put it on the record player, and then play the song. So everything until the song actually starts playing is just a task that needs to happen. It's just a side effect. And we can look at our app and logging into our app the same way. So what do we need to do in order to get our user and our token? Well, we need to call the auth service to log in. We need to handle this redirect flow. And then we need to update the store with the user and the token. Everything until we do that, though, is just a side effect. It's a task that needs to happen. And that's where NGRX can help us. So let's look at the second half of this process. So we get sent back to the app. And we have to handle the redirect. We got to interact with our auth SDK. And then we need to process the success to get the user and token and send the user to wherever we need to send them. So there's a lot happening here. We know that we do need to do some sort of action to kick off this part of the process when we get sent back to the app by the provider. So we create an action here. And then we know that we're going to need to interact with the SDK and do a whole bunch of other stuff. So hopefully your instinct is starting to think that you need an effect here. So we create a handle redirect effect and we listen for the handle redirect action. But then <clears throat> we've got our exhaust map here to help us with whatever we need to do. But what do we actually put inside of it? Well, let's take a stab at it. Well, so we know we need to call this auth services handle redirect function. This is just an observable that works with the SDK to go get your token and your user and whatever redirect URL you need. But then after that, what do we need to do? Well, we know we need to have some sort of success that we dispatch and we need to have some sort of failure that we dispatch if there's an error. But what about all this stuff in the middle? Somehow we need to go set the user and token somewhere and somehow we need to navigate to the redirect URL. But do we do that here? Do we do that elsewhere? Seems like a lot. And then we need to dispatch a success action, but is that supposed to have a payload? What do we need to do? So this is where things start, start to get really confusing and people start to get tripped up. I know it was tripping me up when I first started this. It turns out here that we've run into a complex effect scenario where we're trying to do too many things in one effect. So usually that I found in this situation, if I start to feel like I'm getting confused about what to put in my effect, I've missed something or taken something for granted. So I need to go back, back up, and try to find the hidden side effect that I've missed along the way. Somehow I've taken something for granted. So I go back and I look at this flow again, and I realize that calling the auth service to handle the redirect is already a side effect. And then we go and uh, grab the token and everything and proceed with the process. So we need to know how to work through this. So what I like to do is break a complex effect into smaller pieces. And that way we can just let one effect handle one side effect. When I was chatting with Mike Ryan about this talk a week ago as I was building it, he said that if he ever, if he ever gives a talk on good effect hygiene, this will be one of the tenets. Let one effect handle one side effect. Another thing that really helps me is to write out the flow. So just like we did with our DJ and our login process, we can write this part out. So what do we need to do here? We need to call the auth service to process everything. We need to update the store and we need to redirect the user. So only one of these is actually impacting state, right? So the, the first and the third are side effects and updating the store is changing the state. So when we go back to our effect, we know we need to handle the redirect where we're calling the auth service. And this is already a side effect that we're dealing with. So instead of trying to do everything here, let's refactor this and we'll dispatch a success action. And this time we'll pass along the payload and the redirect URL. What this lets us do is go back to the reducer and we can add a case for handle redirect success. And here we can just go ahead and update the token and the user profile. And that lets us create a new effect, a second effect for handle redirect success. We'll listen for that handle redirect success action, and then we'll use that tap operator again to navigate the user to the redirect URL. Now notice again here, we're not dispatching a new action, so we need to set dispatch to false for this effect. So now we've successfully tackled all three of these, actions that only trigger effects, non-dispatching effects, and writing complex effects. 
So I've hit you with a lot. Let's do a really quick review. So like we said, effects are one of the hardest parts of learning NGRX. And it's also a huge part of implementing auth in NGRX. In vanilla Angular, we tend to have one giant auth service that interacts with our components and our data services. But in NGRX, we have this different architecture where our auth service just becomes this thin wrapper around the SDK and the reducers and selectors and effects are sort of distributing that responsibility. Most people think about effects when it comes to calling services and APIs. And that's where people, the light bulb starts to go on, it starts to click that they need an effect. But people tend to forget, including me, that effects also handle your control flow logic. Effects are the DJ of the NGRX dance floor. I promise if there's one thing you remember from this talk, that's gonna be it. So we looked at though, there are three major things that people struggle with here. And it turns out that all of them show up when you're implementing auth in an NGRX app. So we first, we found the first two just when we try to log into the app, just clicking the login button actually has a lot of complexity behind it. So to break this down and to uh, overcome this, what you wanna do is remember that effects function as a task runner and try to identify where the side effects are and where the store is being updated. And then <clears throat> we found the, the complex effect at the second part of this process of handling the redirect, getting the user and token and sending them to a new place. So this was a complex effect. And when you run into complex effects, there are a few things you can do to make your life a little bit easier. First, you wanna back up find the hidden side effect. What have you taken for granted? Maybe it's a, a call that's being run that doesn't actually return anything, but it has to get run anyway. So break apart the, compl the a complex effect into smaller pieces so that you can only let one effect handle one side effect. Again, it helps to write this out and just figure out what things are just tasks and side effects and what is actually needing to be updated by the reducer in the store. And now, hopefully, in addition to just figuring this out in auth, when you come across these problems with effects in your application, you'll go from a mild panic attack to a sigh of relief. One last thing before I let you go. Uh, NGRX is planning a conference in November, and I have a discount code for it. I'll be there. Uh, Kim will be there. Mike will be there. A lot of people will be there, and I hope to see you there in November. You can find that link as well as all of my slides are at samj.im slash ngconf-hardwired. Well, they will be in about four minutes when I finish uh, uploading them. And uh, yeah, that's all I got. Thank you.